Hi everyone, Syrian Girl here. Trump tweeted that the US will recognize Syria's Golan Heights as Israeli. The Golan Heights is Syrian land that was invaded by Israel when Israel started the Six Day War in 1967 and attacked Syria. The Golan is internationally recognized as Syrian land. The UN Charter protects the sovereignty of nations and it is against international law for a country to invade and claim ownership of another country's land. Iraq, for example, didn't become the 51st state of the United States. The Golan is not Trump's to give away. He's not the king of the earth. And all of Syria is for Syrians. His statements doesn't change the status of the Golan. So what's the meaning behind it all? Well, Israel found oil in the Golan Heights and a company called Genie Energy was set up to steal it. Guess who's on the board of advisors? Jacob Rothschild, world banker and descendant of the creator of Israel. Dick Cheney, oil tycoon and Iraq war architect. Rupert Murdoch, media mogul, who is always pushing for war. And there is the president of the company, Ira Greenstein. Greenstein is a member of Trump's administration and he has deep ties to George Kushner, Trump's son-in-law. And Kushner also has ties to Israel's President Netanyahu. Kushner spent sleepovers at his house when he was a kid. So Trump personally stands to profit from the theft of Syria's Golan Heights. And I take the oil. And I said, I'll take the oil. Well, I'm not looking to quagmire. I'm looking to take the oil. I want to take the oil. I want the oil. And I've been saying that for a long time. Take the oil. I would take the oil. Right. You heard me. I would take the oil. Why don't we just take over the oil? We should take it. Bomb the oil, take the oil. Bomb the oil, take the oil. Just take it. He's ready to put American lives on the line for this. His statement won't make any difference to the Golan Heights official status as being part of Syria, but it does mean he is committing the U.S to perpetual war with Syria, Iran, and Russia, and the continued occupation in the east of Syria and possibly a US occupation of the Golan Heights too. Lieutenant General Richard Clark said US troops who would be deployed to Israel are prepared to die for the Jewish state. Trump has no shame. The US is the world's largest crude oil producer. It doesn't need Syria's minuscule amount of oil. Yet it's trying to take away Syria's oil-producing regions, the east of the Euphrates and the Golan. He's stealing from a tiny country ravaged by war and terrorism. A war caused by US neocons like himself. A war caused by Israel, its Oded Yunon plan and its support of terrorist groups. Israel openly admitted to supporting Al-Qaeda in its war against Syria. It used the Golan Heights as a safe haven for the terrorist group. It admitted to giving guns to Al-Qaeda-linked rebels, as well as providing medical aid. UN peacekeepers witnessed Israel handing boxes of weapons to Al-Qaeda and ISIS. When a journalist asked the head of Mossad why he has no problem helping Al-Qaeda, he said Al-Qaeda hasn't attacked Israel. Okay, you say no preference. There have been reports that Israel has been treating wounded Syrian rebel fighters in its yeah, hospitals yeah, on the border, yeah. including fighters from Nusra Front, yeah. uh, which is, of course, the Al-Qaeda proxy in Syria. Um, do those reports worry you that Israel's helping wounded Al-Qaeda-aligned fighters? You don't think there's going to be blowback against Israel if you get into bed with a, a group like Nusra Front? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's going to be blowback. So let me be clear, you would, you, you're happy to treat Al-Qaeda fighters, we have, but not Hezbollah we fighters. Have, we have a different account with Hezbollah. Al-Qaeda, to the best of my recollection, has up to now not attacked Israel. But has attacked your number one ally and protector and sponsor in the United States of America. Holy fuck! Oh my god! Oh my god! Israel's defense minister said that he would prefer an ISIS victory in Syria. Israel hoped that Al-Qaeda would take over Syria in order to legitimize their annexation of the Golan Heights. They would have claimed that they're doing it to protect Syrian Druze that live inside the Golan Heights from Al-Qaeda. But Al-Qaeda didn't win. Yet Israel decided to go ahead with their Golan annexation plan anyway, even though they don't have any convenient justification. Of course, it's been Israel that's been terrorizing the Syrians inside the Jolan Heights. 
When Israel invaded Syria in 1967, they set fire to 340 villages and farms in the Jolan. Five Druze villages survived, and for the next 50 years, they would live in an open-air prison, separated from their families and the rest of Syria by a demilitarized zone. If Syrians in the Golan want to see and talk to their family members on the other side of that zone, they have to climb up to Shouting Hill and use a megaphone. Syrians who try to resist the occupation become prisoners of war, one of which is patriotic hero Sidhi al Makht, who spent 27 years imprisoned by Israel. As soon as he got out, he learned how to use the internet, took pictures of the IDF hanging out with Al-Qaeda and uploaded them online. Israel sentenced him to another 15 years. In the war of 1973, Syria was able to liberate parts of the Jolan from Israeli occupation. One of the villages liberated was Qunaitara, which was found completely in ruin. This is a historical testament of Israeli barbarism and the fact that they tried to commit genocide against the Syrians of the Jolan. But it's not just about oil or the fact that the Jolan has much of Syria's water. Israel wants that land for religious reasons. Israel is similar to ISIS and Zionism is akin to Wahhabism. Neither is really Judaism or Islam, but they both believe that Syrian land was granted to them by God. Since the Judeans invaded Aramea 2000 years ago, in the same way that ISIS thinks Spain belongs to them because the Moors took it over once. ISIS leader al-Baghdadi said that Syria is not for Syrians. And Trump and Israel are in agreement with him. Like ISIS, Israel was built by foreign fighters from all over the world that joined the terror group Hagan, Irgun and Levi. We start in the harbor at Haifa among still more shiploads of illegal Jewish immigrants seeking homes in Palestine. Meantime, the roundup of terrorist killers goes on. Manacled ex-lieutenants of dead gangster Abraham Stern which genocided the indigenous populations of Palestine. They burned down a Christian town during Christmas. Later, these groups combined to form the IDF. In fact, it's not just the Golan they want to take over, but they want to take over all of Syria up to the Euphrates River. Israel's first Prime Minister Ben-Gurion said the Jewish people have another map which our youths and adults should strive to fulfill, from the Nile to the Euphrates. Of course, they want the land without the Syrians in it. From Palestine to Syria, we are witnessing a Levantine genocide. I don't know why these international terrorists, whether they be Zionists, ISIS, Ottomans or Kurdish separatists, want to take Syrian land. It's like a curse. If you think the religious aspect of this sounds insane, let me remind you that Trump made this announcement during Purim, a Jewish religious holiday, which this year happened to fall on Nowruz, a Zoroastrian equinox holiday celebrated across Persian countries. To top it all off, the US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said he believes Trump was chosen by God to help save the Jewish people. Pompeo was talking to a room full of evangelical Christian Zionists when he said this. The Syrians of the Golan are protesting the Israeli occupation, an attempt of theft of their land. الرابع عشر من شباط هو يوم الدفاع عن الهوية العربية السورية ونحن نعاهد الله والوطن شعبا وجيشا وقيادة ممثلة بسيد الرئيس الدكتور بشار حافظ الأسد أن نبقى أوفياء على العهد وأن نبقى المدافعين عن هذا الوطن حتى تحريره من المحتل الصهيوني وأملنا كبير بجيشنا وبشعبنا وبقائدنا أن يرفع العالم, أن يرفع العالم العربي السوري في ربوع جولان الحبيب Syria has announced that it is determined to liberate this precious piece of Syrian land through all available means, and it's unfortunate that American soldiers are being put in the crossfire. I want to assure you all that Syria expected this Golan Heights move. 
It's been a plan all along, and the cause of the war. PNAC, the project for a new American century, the project for a new Middle East. But Syria has a plan too. Syria will resist, and every inch of Syria will be returned, including the Jolan. This is Syrian Girl. Subscribe, press the bell, and support. Thank you for listening. Over and out.